Hello and welcome to Ernie Chapman Stadium, the home of Wilson Field. It's a beauty and I'm Kyle Carr here with Joshua Feinhirsch. Joshua, how is it out there on the field today? Well, Kyle, it's a hot one today already. You know, up here in the press box, we're feeling the heat for sure with the sun coming through that window. Right now, I'd say it's around in the mid 80s before 11 a.m. So by the end of this game, who knows? It may get into the 90s. Definitely. Well, speaking of heat, there's definitely going to be some players out there bringing the heat. Who's going to be those two or those three players for Whittier, Josh? Well, for Whittier, you know, first up, we have the attacker, you know, Samantha Nimmo. You know, Samantha on the season wearing number seven there for the Poets with 41 goals, 12 assists, and 10 ground balls. So definitely one of the key scorers that we need to look out for for Whittier this morning and early afternoon. And coming up next, we have not just a star for Whittier, in my opinion, but a star for all of Syak. We have Lauren Jade Sepulveda, the midfielder with 45 goals, 32 assists. And look at that, Kyle. 62 ground balls, creating opponents for opportunities, rather, for her team to score one of the leaders of this Whittier team. And finally, we have number 23, Peyton Klimmer, one of the other midfielders here for Whittier with 30 goals, only four assists, but again, 22 ground balls. So she's all about creating opportunities for her team to score through the ground balls and through her own stick as well with the 30 goals. So again, for Chapman, I feel like Kyle segueing into you. Got to play some defense, but we have some offense to look out for today as well. Definitely. On that Chapman side, the temperature will be rising with these three key players. First up, we've got number 34, Jessica Ricketts. Look at that. 33 goals, 10 assists with 20 ground balls. So definitely generating lots of opportunities and offense for this Panther squad. Up next, we have number 20, Annika Carlson. She's definitely bringing the heat and smoking some goals for this Panther squad. Mm -hmm. 37 and 11 assists. That is a lot of offense generated. 14 ground balls. So these, these two ladies are definitely bringing it for this Panther squad. But our third player, we got number 24, Mylanai Ferreira. She's got 29 goals, 12 assists, and 15 ground balls. Definitely, these three ladies are leading the offense for the squad, and those poets are going to have their hands full today. All right, and down, speaking of bringing the heat and this temperature, that's all we've really been talking about, but the man with the actual temperature down on the field, Justin Lee. What do you got for us down there, Justin? Thank you, Josh and Kyle, out there up in the booth. Well, it's a pretty beautiful day down here for some women's lacrosse. We got the Chapman Panthers and the Whittier Poets playing each other. Chapman coming in here today with their final regular season game of the year, as they will already clinch a berth in the Skyhawk tournament. Or on the other side, the Poets have coming in here off a crazy 14 to 13 win against Occidental College in an overtime win and they come in here looking for a playoff spot. If they win today, they will be in the, officially in the playoffs, but a lot of implications here today. We have the families of all the seniors here today, as this is the final game for a lot of these seniors, but it won't be the final game of the year because they will be playing in the playoffs. But I'll send it back to you guys up in the booth. Thank you, Justin, from the sidelines, giving us some great insight. He'll be giving us some amazing insight all game hopefully he stays safe down there in the heat as do all of you and today it is also senior day kyle for the women's lacrosse team here as it is their final game you know what do you think the emotions could be like for these seniors although they do have playoffs coming up so they have that to look forward to but going out with a bang for your last game definitely that last regular season game has a little bit of a twinge to it uh, a lot of highs a lot of lows let's take it down right now as that senior night senior day as you will is underway Our fourth senior entered the record books this year for the most assists in a single season in Chapman history. She's tallied 27 assists this year and counting with 11 goals scored. A two-year starter as an attacker, she has scored 15 career goals and currently ranks second all-time with 36 career assists. 
She's a five foot three attacker all the way from Sag Harbor, New York, earning her degree in communication studies. Number 30, Sophia Pittis. Our final senior is another record setter playing in her final home match. Last season, she set the Chapman match record with 13 draw controls in the Skyx semifinal against CMS. With 11 on Wednesday night, she broke the single season Chapman record for draw controls, as her total currently sits at 89 this year. In her two, in her two full and two shortened seasons at Chapman, she has 170 career draw controls, just one shy of tying the all-time record. She has also scored 57 career goals and 16 career assists. She has career highs in goals, assists, draw controls, and ground balls this season. She's a 5'9 mini from Thousand Oaks, earning her degree in business administration. Number 34, Jessica Ricketts. All right, ladies and gentlemen, one more time. The Chapman graduating class of 2023. All right, what a beautiful ceremony, Josh. It's mm -hmm. uh, brought a tear to my eye thinking about being a senior. I don't think I'm uh, going to graduate. I'm just going to stay here. Is that cool with you? I mean, you could do that. I mean, one of our CS fans, very own Ryan Deeb, had the same feelings. I know he took that extra semester. Shout out to Ryan. Hopefully he's watching today. But we also have the SIAC standings coming up here shortly. And Whittier is playing for a playoff berth today. Whittier is currently sitting in fifth place with an eight and seven overall record, four and six conference record. And with a win, since this is in conference, they will pass Occidental for a conference record and get into the playoffs. Chapman already is safe in third place with a seven and four conference record and 10 and five overall. So Kyle, what do you think Whittier, you know, playing for the playoffs, how do you think they're going to approach this game here this morning? Oh, there's definitely going to be some hunger. Uh, there's going to be a lot of drive coming. Uh, last time the Panthers and the Poets met on the field out there, it was very close with a 10-9 victory for the Panthers. So expect Whittier to come out, no pun intended, guns blazing with those lacrosse sticks. I definitely expect a battle, uh, very physical play. Granted, the women's game, we'll cover this later, but they're not really allowed to check. So we'll go over that, but uh, expect that physicality to still be existent, even though it is the women's game. They're going to be playing really physical. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I definitely agree. This is going to be a hard fall game. A 10-9 to win for Chapman at Whittier on April 5th. You know, that's uh, Whittier. That's one of their conference losses, so they're looking to avenge that one as well as we have the starting lineups being announced right now. Georgia Bakioki. An attacker is a 5'7 senior from Pleasanton, number 7, Samantha Nimmo. Then he's a 5'11 senior from Portland, number 9, Chella Davidson. An attack is a 5'7 senior from Fruita, Colorado, number 11, Keidra Hall. Another mid, he's a 5'7 senior from Middleburg, Virginia, number 13, Lauren J. Sepulveda. And the goal is a 5'6 junior from Shaker Heights, Ohio, number 15, Haley Hughes Gill. On defense, a 5'6 senior from San Marcos, number 19, Olivia Hamm. The attack, a 5'3 senior from Escondido, number 20, Molly Landon. 
For the Middies of 5'9", senior from Simi Valley, number 22, Jai Bell. For the midfield of 5'5", senior from Dallas, Texas, number 23, Peyton Clymer. And on defense is a 5'2", sophomore from Fullerton, number 25, Juliana Hodgson. Head coach is Allison Doherty, assisted by Larkin McDermott. And now the starters for your Chapman University Panthers. On the attack, a 5'6 senior from West Lane, Oregon, number two, Anna Close. Another attacker, a 5'3 junior from Coronado, number three, Josie Morrissey. And the goal, a 5'3 junior from Wellesley, Massachusetts, number eight, Anna Hero. And attackers, a 5'6 sophomore from Pleasanton, number nine, Megan Guerra. On defense, a 5'4", junior from Redwood City, number 12, Sophie Pelton. Also on defense, a 5'2", sophomore from San Jose, number 14, Chloe Castan. Another defender, a 5'9", freshman from Summit, New Jersey, number 15, Liv Huntley Robertson. Another defender, a 5'4", senior from Temecula, number 16, Sophia Lissitra. In the midfield, a 5'7", sophomore from Tiburon, number 20, Annika Carlson. Another midi, a 5'4", senior from San Ramon, number 24, Maylani Ferreira. And attackers, a 5'3", senior from Sag Harbor, New York, number 30, Sophia Finnis. And a midi's a 5'9", senior from Thousand Oaks, number 34, Jessica Ricketts. Head coach of the Panthers is Dan Kirkpatrick, assisted by Nicholas Bikel. And now fans, we ask that you please rise, remove your hats if you're able, so we honor our country with the playing of our national anthem. rendition. I don't know if you were listening to those starting lineups there, Josh, but there is definitely a lot of representation of the nation on that field. Beautiful rendition of the National Anthem. The Panthers there giving their traditional hand touch, letting them know, hey, I'm with you. We're here in this together. Great to see you, especially considering it's the last game of the regular season. Josh, now that the jitters are over, we're about to get started. What are the players going through right now? Well, you know, probably some Excitement for sure, it's the final game of the season. You've been together with this unit the entire season. You have the chemistry already for both sides, I would I would imagine. So both teams would definitely have some excitement. Obviously nerves, I think more on Whittier's side because they're playing for the playoffs as I believe Chapman is locked into that third place slot there in the SIAC conference. And I think something that's going to really show here early on is who's gonna win the draw control battles, I feel like, you know, to get possession of the ball early. 
you know, I feel like whoever's going to start scoring first could go on a little bit of a run, although last game was very close. You know, both teams really, really want this game, Kyle. Definitely, it's gonna come down to that possession game, and it all starts from the face-off X, which we're about to have happen here shortly as the players take their positioning on the field. Those ground balls, as we saw, big factor to what creates offense, and both teams do not shy away from battling for those ground balls. Definitely look for an active game. Looks like we're getting set, ready to go. I, I, I'm ready for some lacrosse. What about you, Josh? Oh, I, I'm very ready. You know, this is what we've been waiting for for the past hour of preparation for this broadcast and all throughout pregame as well. But this is what you all came here to see viewing this broadcast is this face-off battles. We have Jessica Ricketts versus Peyton Klimmer there in the draw point battle. As we await the ref allowing this to start here. Slightly different face off in the women's game than the men's, whereas the men start down low. Women start up about uh, right there at the waist level and Panthers come up with it. Working into the tack zone already. And they're gonna work down low around the crease, back up out high. Working to that far side of the field. Whittier gets in there and comes up with a steal. Yeah, that was a great steal there from Whittier already showing some physical defense. Has Chapman playing physical early as well, but cannot get the ball there. Sprinting down the field. Here come the Poets. She is a one-man wrecking ball. Now she sets up, getting the support from her teammates. And Kyle, that was one of the key players, Lauren Jade Sepulveda, there with the ball, already making an impact, going almost the whole length of the field there to create an opportunity. So she's definitely out here early, already contributing. And we didn't cover the steal category, but that definitely led to this little offense here that the Poets have put into place. Good to see Sepulveda getting in early. That's how you get a good start. Whittier still with it on that far side, trying to set up some plays. Not a lot of moving of the feet away from the ball. The defense is just going to take that anytime. If you're not moving across, making us ha make those plays, then we'll stay right at home. First save of the game, but then it rolls in right behind her. What a, we thought it was going to be a save for the Panthers, but it's a goal for the Poets. Yeah, that's just unlucky there when you're in goal anytime for any sport involving goal. When that just rolls in after you've tried to have, you know, a great effort there. I believe that is number six, Georgia, Georgia there who scored. Yes, it is number six, Georgia. Bowie Chochi there with that goal to take Whittier up 1-0 early on here in this game. And that's Anna Haru in net. Thought she had the save and just snuck right by her. So we're going to have another face off here as Whittier strikes first at Wilson Field. Yeah, I said pregame, you know, whoever strikes first, you know, has that advantage as we see Coach Dan there looking on in probably some disappointment right now, but it is still very, very early on in this game. Face off underway. Whittier comes up with it. Striking down the field. Getting her players set up. Works up to the top of the point there. Cross play into the middle of the crease. Shot. It's saved. And the Panthers come up with the ball. I think that was a very important save there, Kyle, for Anna Hira in the net there. After you have that really just devastating rolled ball that just goes right past you, how do you respond from that? You respond with the save. That's a great sign there for Chapman's defense. Good luck. Says the ball's moved up almost behind the, the net for the Panthers. They're going to work on this close side here. Back up to the top, middle. Far side. No, she's going to strike down. Look at the work in their feet, moving, trying to get the defense out of position. But a good pick keeps them out to the edge. Annika Carlson and Jessica Ricketts right now kind of playing, you know, catch there just outside of the goal area. She's working low, 
near the crease. A shot, but a save goes out wide. Panthers ball. Yeah, just missed that one there. Good, good attack, though, as Melani Ferreira comes up short there on that shot as well, Kyle. You know, Chapman getting some good opportunities, but not yet converting. You know, what do you think is the main reason for that? Uh, they're, they're trying to uh, probe this goalie early. They're working some plays. They're getting their feet moving. I expect them to break through if they keep up this offense. It's only a matter of time through, till they break through. Probably just shooting the shot a little too early, maybe not getting the, the exact angle that they're looking for, and that's kind of leading to these missed shots. Yeah, but again, you know, they're still out here. They're still with the ball again, so hopefully they can get something going here. Dead ball there. Save. Panthers trying to come up with it, but the Poets come up. They're working down middle field. I believe that was Peyton Klimmer who got that. Grandma, no, that was Lauren Jade to pull that again, actually. Excuse me. Outside edge there, number 22, Jay Battle. Back on the near side, up to the top. Working around the perimeter, not really probing the inside yet, trying to make any dashes through. A lot of east to west, not a lot of north to south play happening for the Poets. And Panthers caused turnover on that out-of-bounds ball. Yeah, that was great team defense. They're not giving anything to the Whittier Poets. Again, Lauren Jade to pull the though, Kyle. Again, starting that opportunity. You can already see her impact very early on in, in this game. Yeah, she is a very dominant midfielder out there, not allowing much to happen as she comes up with the ball again. And she's running it in near side. Pass off to her teammate at the top. And again, they're going to try that cycle play, working out the outside. Keep attention to these players that are down low. They're going to start cutting across, trying to make some plays, get the defense out of commission. Good shot down low, or pass down low, as you will. Panthers come up with that one. Ooh, a little quick pass to her goalie. That's <laughs> I'm not recommended to shoot yeah, that's at your goalie like that. Yeah, that's always very risky, Kyle. I was like, what is going on there? <laughs> Hopefully not an own goal, but we are okay. As Jessica Rickus now comes out of the game after that play for some rest. And Panthers have it on the far side in the attacking zone. Working down low behind the cage. Passed off on this near side. Now back up at the top. Working those feet. That's one thing I've noticed about the, the difference in offense here. The Panthers are being a lot more aggressive with moving those feet, trying to work the play down low and up high. Good pass in, but just doesn't connect, and that's a big steal by Spolvita again. Yeah, again, making her impact, but we can't say it enough as we have, again, Georgia with the ball running all the way downfield already with a goal here today. With that aggressive style of offense that the Panthers are playing, those turnovers are, are going to be more likely as they're trying to move the ball a little bit quicker. And Whittier is going to play that outside game. That's a little safer. Not really going to cause much commotion down low, though. As Samantha Nimmo will start with the ball here. And that's going to be a goal for the Poets. Now, Samantha Nimmo, she just took that in herself. I mean, honestly, it was almost like she had a wide open lane, like in basketball to the rim. You know, the Grizzles were playing that kind of defense last night with the Lakers. But hopefully, you know, Chapman not playing that level of defense. But already down 2 nothing here early, less than six minutes into this game, Kyle. Again, as you said, Chapman is being aggressive, but not yet converting as we see the replay here again. Free lane, as I said, that just can't be happening. Yeah, after that little dead ball play there, she works it in. Defense couldn't quite get their sticks on her, and she took advantage of it. Samantha Nemo looking a, good for the Poets. Yeah, all the key players have been looking good. Peyton Klimmer hasn't really gotten going just yet, but Lauren Jade's pulled, though. You've seen 
her already with those steals, ground ball pickups, and now you see Nimmo there with the goal. Face off up. Ooh, a little high stick there. Huh? Down ball. I am Panthers come up with it. Work on the far side. Trying to get deep, but again, a steal by the Poets. The possession just needs to get a little bit more solid for these Panthers if they're expecting to come back in this game. Yeah, that was Trello Davidson there with the steal for the Whittier Poets. As Sepulta again taking the ball up. Great moves here by Whittier. They just seem relaxed, even though they're not really playing as aggressive as the Panthers. They seem really content just playing this wide outside game, getting into the offensive zone, work the ball around, make the plays when they feel comfortable making them. Yeah, you know, they're playing very methodically right now. When they have a 2 nothing lead already, there's no need for them to be rushing right now. You know, Chapman looking a little bit more panicked on the defensive end here, it seems like. They're triple teaming Lauren already. Work up to the far side. Whittier Poets in the attacking area. We're going to have a slash there. That's one of the things that's a little bit different here in the women's game. It's not a physical, as we said. We have something coming up a little later where you will get more of a deep dive into that difference. But that might be impacting this game already, as we've seen some physical play already here, Kyle. And we had a big save there. That's Haru with the save, and you had Sepulveda right there at the doorstep, so definitely a breather for the Panthers as they try to break out of their defensive zone. But Whittier comes up, and after that missed pass, we're going to go back to the Panthers. Panthers have really been kind of getting lucky off of these blown whistles here so far, not making too many mistakes. Mainly just been the defense on the back end by the goal. Yeah, they're definitely trying to clean up their their turnovers in the offensive half. They're not playing too too bad. It's it is only a two nothing game. Timeout called. Looks like coach is just gonna get their heads straight, let them calm down, let them breathe, re remind them what their structure is, and play the game that they play. I think that's a very important thing to do right now, Kyle. You know, you don't want this game getting out of hand. Again, it is still early, you know. We've seen it in other games that we have covered so far this lacrosse season for both men and women where goals have been scored 5-6 at a time. So it's definitely still possible to come back here very, very early on as we see Coach Dan talking with his team. Looking calm and composed right now, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, definitely calm and composed. It's only 2 nothing. There's, there's nothing to get too worked up. I think you just got to remind the players to, to, to work their system. They've been practicing. They've been playing this all year. They know what they need to do. Just that simple reminder and kind of take them out of the, the space that they're in right now mentally and refreshing, hitting that refresh button. Yeah, I think this is good to get the players hydrated as well as we see a lot of Woodier players already here getting some water. And I believe both Kyle and I now as well are going to both take a sip of our water as it's definitely getting warmer as I want to remind all viewers to stay hydrated today please and if you are outside at all please wear sunscreen please wear a hat you know it's definitely getting like summer weather here already in late April definitely we are jumping from it we went from about 50 to 60 degree weather to a quick 80 degree weather that will catch you by surprise I know I got burnt the other weekend didn't even think about sunscreen that was on me but I guarantee these ladies they're professionals they all have sunscreen on down there and they are hydrating away. Ready to come back into this game are the Panthers. Whittier sitting on a nice two-goal lead. What do you think their coach is telling them? Telling them to stay aggressive. That's what it kind of seems like based off of this huddle, what we can see. The coach is really getting in there, clapping, saying, hey, listen, we have a nice start, but it can all evaporate at any moment. You know, still very early. Not even 10 minutes have gone by in this game. Although, again, a great start. But I will say as well, Defense hasn't necessarily been tested. Yes, they've gotten in there, but they've done a very good job. They haven't really been stressed at all. You know, both of the shots that, you know, Chapman got on goal were a little bit far off. So, you know, the goalie did not really have to save them yet. And in goal, we have Haley Hughes-Gill there for Whittier. So it'll be interesting to see how she reacts potentially to 
I would assume is probably going to be very aggressive Chapman possession here right now. Oh, yeah. Coming off that timeout, they are going to be hitting Hughes hot in at the net. And Panthers are going to work down low behind the cage up to this near side. Now they're back at the top trying to shake him off. Looking for that passing lane. Now she's going to cycle out. Tried to get in, but the Whittier defense not fooled. Another pick play. Shot. Ah, oh, just wide. Panthers are the first ones there, though, and they're going to take this ball back in. They're not hesitating. Out to the near side. Deep in. She's in the slot low, dangerous area, but Whittier attacking her. Can she dig it up? And now oh, goalie comes up big. That was Hanukkah Carlson there who had that wide shot, one of our key players earlier on in this game. She had a good look there, I thought, Kyle, but just couldn't really convert there. Because now Whittier again takes possession here. Saw great defense, great communication from the Poets in the back end. They didn't seem phased at all by the Chapman attempts there. As they come back up to the wide area, and there's Sepulveda with it. Let's see what she can do. Double teamed, triple teamed. Breaks through, doesn't even care. And takes another stick high. Her goggles are coming off. We said it was going to be a physical game, and Sepulveda not... Very uh, interested in taking those slashes until her goggles came off. Then it was kind of like, all right, I got to stop. Yeah, but again, she ran right through that triple team of freight train coming down the field. But as I'm going to say, she wanted the smoke. You have to be able to take the smoke. You know, again, Grizzlies reference. They were talking, couldn't take the smoke. You know, <laughs> so, you know, you, you got to be able to take that, especially if Lauren Jade's pulled the Probably the best player on this Whittier team. And I don't think that was a dirty play. I do think that was an accident there as well. But hopefully she's okay, though. Taking anything to the head area in any sport is not ideal. Definitely not. And that, that, those lacrosse sticks on the women's game, a little bit wider than the men's. And those things will get you. Now Poets have it below the cage. Trying to break free, a little double team, and there's a clear check. That's going to be a penalty because yep. you can't do that here in the ladies' game. And that was on Peyton Klimmer there, and that penalty for Chapman will be on Sophie Pelton there. You know, that's just a lapse of judgment there, in my opinion. The stick to the head, that's, you know, an action play. That's where you're going for the ball there. But, it, but the check, come on, we, we can't be doing that, especially this early in, in the game. That might be out of frustration there. Yeah, I think that was a frustration play. Coming up at this heat, you know, they're down 2 nothing. They can't, they can't get anything going. She's just trying to make her presence known and let the poets know that this isn't going to be an easy one. Penalty or not, that body, it's, she's going to think twice before she goes around the net again. It's Pulvita again at the top. She passes it off but receives it right back. Works around to Davidson. And yeah, Peyton Klimmer, so far, something I know, she's kind of been more behind the goal, kind of been more of a facilitator here so far. She does only have four assists on the season, but hey, maybe today they were coming in trying to have her be a facilitator, throw Chapman off here. Davidson down, worked around behind the net, down in the deep, and it's a going to be a goal. I thought I heard a whistle before the goal went in, so let's see what happens here. I thought so too, and that is Georgia Bitoshi there. Again, number six has two goals here already for Whittier if this stands and it will not stand as they will start off again with the ball. Dead ball here on that. And big save. Oh, right after the late goal was scored after the whistle. That does not count, and they get the drop ball. But then Whittier comes back and scores. Yeah, that was, you know, great heads-up play there. I believe Georgia again had that steal. Anna with the great save there in goal. But that was Peyton Klimmer, key player, coming out. Oh, no, that was... Yeah, was Samantha Nemo. Nemo, apparently. I thought that was Klimmer with the ball there, but she might have passed that off last second. But again, two key players working together. The key players having a great impact for Whittier already. 
That was a great play down low after the big save from the drop ball. As they announce the goal here at Wilson Field. But the save comes out. And then Whittier gets the ball back behind the net. Yep. Makes a nice little passing play to Nemo, and she capitalizes. And that's her second goal already today, Kyle. Already two goals for her. Can she get the natty hat trick? That is the question, unless the Panthers can score here and get in the way of that natural hat trick, which would be good for the Panther squad to do. Clemmer did win that faceoff, though, I believe. Yes, yeah, so she will come up with that ground ball. They're going to give the ball to Whittier. No penalty there. Just a reset as Whittier has it at the top of the crease area. They're working around the perimeter again, just playing their game. Sepulveda in deep, playing strong, but that's a big save for the Panthers. It seemed like her shot was kind of blocked there. She didn't have a full range of motion on that shot, I felt like there, Kyle. Didn't th that it look like that to you, too? Yeah, I think... Panthers defense were able to get their sticks in there and disrupt her from getting the, the shot she really wanted off. And that makes the job for Hero a lot easier. Mm -hmm. As supposed to there, playing some physical defense on Annika Carlson. Panthers trying to bring it in from the defensive half of the field. Can they get past this midway point as Whittier clogging up the middle zone? Finally, some passing plays. Get it down low. Jessica Ricketts with it on that far side, but passes it off. And now we're back below the cage. Coming to the near side. Carrying. Looking for a pass. Doesn't see it. Button hooks back. Pass it off. She goes to probe in, but doesn't see anything. Back up high is the ball. Now on that far side, working that lane, trying to probe in. That's Ricketts, and there's a shot and a <laughs> save. I thought, did that go in or was that a save? No, it looked like she had the dunk on her. I believe that actually went right over the goal. Dang, I, I thought that, Ricketts I know that did not. I it. thought she had that too, Kyle, but it. That was Josie Morrissey, actually. The Josie Morrissey, the midfielder there for Chapman, was kind of really controlling that a little bit behind the behind the net. She was able to get some penetration for other players there as well. So good pace there from her. Change up of the lines here for both teams, trying to get some fresh legs and some cooled off legs. Oh, yes, yes, that is definitely very important here as both sidelines might add directly in the sun. No shade here for the players. No, Wilson Field is all about roasting out there. It's Southern California. We're supposed to be out in the sun, right? Yes, definitely, definitely true. But, you know, again, hopefully everyone out there is staying hydrated. <laughs> Hydration is key, as they say. As Whittier again working the ball on the outside perimeter. They're on this near side now. Kind of near the cage, but Panthers come up with the steal. They're trying to exit. That was a great steal there by Liv Huntley Robertson there, the freshman defender. Panthers on, working on the far side, coming down into the attack. She's got her legs pumping. Little pass off into the middle. Digs it down. Ground ball's down. Whittier trying to get it. It's a whack. Oh, she, and she picks it up. That's number 24, Melanie Ferrer, one of our th three key players of the game for the Panthers. Yeah, that was great hustle and effort there by Melanie Ferrer. Again, wearing the number 24, you know, you can't expect anything less with anybody wearing that number. She's working it right now with it. Probing in deep. And ran right into the Whittier player. Let's see what the ref calls. Oh, we got a flag. High cross check. Ran right into Julie O'Brien there, the hybrid defender and midfielder for the Whittier Poets. We said it was going to be a physical one, Josh, and the Panthers are definitely not disappointing in that department today. But Whittier also 
not afraid to step away from those on-rushing opponents. And we saw Sepulveda earlier taking some wax and slashes as she bought, fought through a triple team. Do you think it's going to ramp up, or do you think this is about the pinnacle of what we're going to see tonight? I'm not expecting, you know, any, you know, big, big fights or anything to happen. Although I did say, wanted that, you know, wanted, no, don't want anyone to get hurt, but, you know, I want to see passion. You know, as Chapman there gets the steal right there, that is number 27 out of car there. The freshman making a big play. Now Panthers have it at the top of the their offensive zone near on the near side trying to shake her defender passed off to the top and we got a push from behind on Whittier so it's going to be a drop ball for the Panthers and the end of the period unfortunately ends that what could have been a offensive opportunity Josh, first quarter down. What do you think? Well, I mean, the defense ha has improved, you know. The main thing that they have to be focused on on defense is that open lane that Samantha Nimmo had to that second goal on that dead ball play right there. Again, I like the physicality, but no more no more checking. You know, we, we don't need that. You know, I like the aggressiveness with the sticks, though. You know, really trying to steal that ball, try to get some opportunities, try to get some ground balls. But I think Chapman's also being outworked, though, in that area. As we've seen, you know, Georgia gets some big steals. Lauren Jade Sepulveda gets some big steals. You know, down 3 nothing here at the end of the first quarter. It's not the end of the world. But after this, going into halftime, want to make that, you know, preferably, obviously, to be in the lead. But you want to make it at least closer than it is right now. Definitely want to be within one going into the half, Kyle. Oh, definitely, Josh. Yeah, we've seen Sepulveda just train wrecking through the Panthers midfield and defense. So the Panthers got to step up and looks like they were starting to kind of double or triple team her, trying to shut her down because she is a driving force behind the Poet offense. But also we've seen some great plays coming from the Panthers as, you know, we've, we've seen some wonderful plays uh, going down we had Jessica Ricketts working it down low. We also had number 24, May Lenny Ferreira. She's trying to make some offense. They just can't get into the net. What do they need to change when it comes to their offensive ap approach, Josh? Well, I think maybe some different movements. You know, they kind of had some, a lot of the same movements on their players. A lot of the same players like Ricketts, Carlson controlling the ball, which is great. But they were also able to get something with Josie Morrissey when she was behind the goal there, really trying to help, you know, speed up the pace of the of this game so far. And Jessica Ricketts, I think, needs to use her frame to her advantage. She's very tall, has a height advantage. We saw that when she got her one shot and just slightly misfired, which is okay. You know, definitely was a little crowded there. As you said, you, we, you thought she had the dunk goal pretty much there. So, you know, hopefully that can happen here as 3 to nothing is the score heading into the second as both teams get their sticks up in the huddle in solidarity as the second quarter is about to get underway here at Wilson Field. The action ready to get underway. Panthers trying to put something on the board as they are currently blanketed by the Whittier defense. Three to nothing the score entering the second quarter. And as I actually, Kyle, right before we start this quarter, as I look into the crowd, you know, I see a lot of signs for the seniors. We have a lot of support here from not only the seniors' families, friends, other community members of Orange County, as well as we do have some Whittier fans here as well, you know, not being terribly far away from Chapman, you know, within a half an hour distance. Not surprised there that a lot of Whittier fans made the trip here as well. It's always great to have the Chapman faithful in the stands. And we do like to welcome our opposing fans into Wilson Field. I think Ernie Chapman Stadium is probably the most friendly stadium you can go to in college sports. So enjoy it while you're here. And if you're watching on CSBN right now, we wish you were here. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Can you can you imagine a more beautiful place to be on a Saturday right now? I can't, re realistically. I, I really can't right now as we have the second quarter drop point battle here about to start. 
It's face off, kind of almost like a sumo wrestling type uh, approach to win those draws, and Panthers come up with it. Yeah, Jessica Breaker, so that was key. That's a tone setter, I feel like, already. Already racing down the field there as Morrissey again starting to control the pace. On the far side, Panthers working the ball. They have it up top. That's Ricketts with it now. Trying to get some communication and get her team moving their feet. Put the play in motion. Shaking off the top. A lot of movement away from the ball. Now they're on the near side. Streaking down around the back. A pick play tried to go there, but didn't quite go in the way that they were expecting. Kind of like basketball, you cannot move once you set your pick, or it will be a penalty. Yes, that's definitely important. Not only in basketball, but here in lacrosse as well. You can't have any of those moving picks. Basketball called the moving screen. Definitely a good similarity there, Kyle. On the far side, working the ball, but not a lot of movement. Looks like Panthers are taking a book out of the Whittier playbook, and instead of trying to rush it, are going to just play that slow, methodical game. However, in that probe attempt, we got some slashes on Rickett, so dead ball, and Panthers get an attempt number two. This is a huge opportunity here for Ricketts, being one of the key players. Again, as I said, the tall frame, the 5'9 frame, use that to your advantage here. Get in score. I think this should be... Not, I want to say easy goal, but a goal here for Ricketts. And the whistle blows. Shot, and it's a goal for the Panthers. Ricketts with the low to high goal score. The champ of goal is scored by number 34, Jessica Ricketts. Much needed goal there for Chat McCall. Didn't I predict that? As I said, I said Jessica Ricketts, she knows what she has to do. Get in there, score. That's what she did. And now we have the celebratory Usher song, Yeah, playing. And I can't think of a better song to play after that first goal right now as we have a replay here. Is Ricketts again. She's using her frame, her speed, drops a stick in the sense of finally needed that goal. As now it is 3-1 here early on in the second quarter. Momentum here, you think, Kyle, for Chapman to start stringing some goals together? I think that is exactly what just happened. That was the icebreaker. Ricketts has entered the jungle. Face off coming. And again, Ricketts almost comes up with it, but the Poets still battling. And they're just going to call it Whittier Ball. Oh, it's down. Uh, refs considering the play not started yet. So Whittier gets to a try again as Davidson has it. And that was Molly Landon who came up with that with that ball early on for Whittier. And she has it again here. Davidson around to that far side. Working the goal line. Into the middle. Oh, and it's a miss fire for the poets but they get to it first so they're gonna bring it back into play as that was lauren jade sepulveda there kyle with that misfire well she's been very very active defensively pushing the pace hasn't been able to get anything to go into that net yet which is key because if she gets one <laughs> maybe not the only one today so definitely key to hold her but she does have the dead ball opportunity here try to go for a pass there instead of a shot and the Panthers were keen to that play as now they're applying the pressure as Whittier works the near side. Back up high, it's down. Panthers try to come up with the steal, but the Poets keep possession. Up high, little cross, a little change. Back outside, down low, into the middle. Watch that shot, and it goes wide. Panthers trying to dig it up, and they rake it. Oh, down into the crease, down in the crease for the goalie. You see how she worked it and placed it there for the goalie. Basically, that is a automatic clearing of the crease, so the goaltender gets to pick up the ball, and the attacking players have to get out of that area. That's an opportunity for the Panthers as they work the far side, and they're sprinting down, coming in hot, streaking. 
Went a little west instead of north to south. Down, Ricketts fighting for it. And they're going to call a dead ball here for Ricketts. Yeah, that was some great hustle there. That was Molly Landon who was kind of checking Melanie Ferreira as she was going down the field there. Is this another dead ball opportunity for Ricketts? We saw her get an easy goal here. This could be a second easy goal. Make it 3-2 here early on in, in the second quarter. Waiting for that whistle. It goes. And shot. Oh, just over. Panthers first to it. They're going to quickly bring it back into play. That is Sophie Bittis there, one of the seniors who was honored tonight, today, excuse me, behind the net. Working down the middle through the center, and we've got a uh, dead ball for her. Too many sloshes, and free ball for the Panthers here. This is Annika Carlson here with the dead ball attempt. Annika Carlson prides herself very much on having strong and consistent performances. You definitely have to be strong as she scores. Much needed goal there for the Panthers. 3-2 here already early for the Panthers in the second quarter. Outscoring Whittier 2-0 here. Less than a minute, Kyle. Scoring very fast here. On the cross on the sophomore for Chapman. Although Chapman's yet to get anything going in open play so yeah. far, which is a little bit concerning. But, you know, hey, two goals when you're down 3-0 and two goals. But that's something to keep a note of as this quarter goes on and in the second half. Look as she drives through. Looks like she's going to shoot low. Fakes out the goaltender and goes high just over the shoulder. The only thing that I can say about that dead ball is it was after the Panthers probed the middle. They go in hard. They're not afraid to attack these danger areas and get those dead balls. And that's what's leading to scoring. So if it's going to give you those opportunities, do what you got to do. But it would be nice to see the Panthers create some offense off of a regular open play. Yes. But Whittier streaking down. And that was Lise Mayer in the face off there rather than Jessica Ricketts. Ricketts, I believe, is getting a quick rest right now. Yes, yeah, she is. Putting the water bottle down, talking to coach, getting a breather strategizing it's always good to see those star players they're not just on the sidelines you know drinking water listening to their ipod or something they are actually talking to the coach they're watching the game going over strategies you you don't you don't see that unless they're the they're an expert player that's very true very true but i will say kyle i don't know if anyone's listening to their ipods anymore man I, you know i was thinking ipad and ipod came out and it was just what I just, you know, I went with it. Hey, it's I okay. It's it. okay. I'm sure everyone watching here has some great iPod memories from back in the day. Don't want to age myself too much, but my first one was an iPod Mini, so just let that uh, sink in and figure out when those came out. Meanwhile, we got Whittier with the ball on the far side. Now near the midfield. Working down. Now to the top. Back to the far side. Whittier loves to play this perimeter game. It can lull a defense asleep. And quickly you can attack the middle if, if everyone gets flat-footed. But it also doesn't really generate too much. That is why it is only a 3-2 game. Right. And that was Olivia Ning there taking that hit as she will start off this Chapman possession. Nobody in the box for either team. Just a change of possession play. Up, oh, Panthers have it on the near side. Carrying down low pick play, but read that one. And she works way outside and below. Now it's on the far side, passed off. We got a whistle here. Dead ball. Panthers get the chance to score here again. Yeah, this would make it 3-3 on three dead balls. And a big save. Panthers digging. They come up with it on the outside, number 38. 
Parker House there. The freshman And a goal by the Panthers. And that is in a close. The junior attacker getting that goal there. The first goal of open play so far for Chapman. Much, much needed. 3-3 three, three now. As we apologize for the graphic there. Now 3-3. Three, three. Do you see a timeout here coming from Whittier? Because within four minutes, it's already 3-3. Three, three. And now Chapman's starting to get some goals and opportunities on open play as well. As we have the replay here, let's see what really happened here. Is Ferreira going for it? We got Parker House with that. Again, Ferreira now up top. Great pass in there to Close, who gets the bounce shot in. That was a great read there by Close because Haley's stick there and goal was up high. So when you bounce that, you got to decide whether you're going to move down or try to save it on the bounce up. Didn't bounce high enough. Great read, 3-3 three, three score here. That was a beautiful assist by Ferreira as she saw her streaking down low. Gave her the perfect give-and-go pass. And then we have a goal by the Panthers. Tied game at Wilson Field. Behind the net, we've got Sophia Vitus. Then she passes it off. That's given back to Ferreira. Ricketts has now checked back into the game here as well. Oh, she tried to give a little side pass there to Anna Close. That was close, but it didn't get there. <laughs> yes, that was definitely close there as oh we have Chapman picking up the ground ball there back into the attacking zone Ricketts with it she's dangerous shot there and it's down low and a behind the back oh, goalie man. had no clue where that ball was and then Josie Morrissey coming from behind scoops it up and puts it in yes four nothing goal run here Morrissey there with the goal four three now Chapman as we apologize again for the graphic but again already four through there Josie Morrissey they're able to sneak up from behind get that shot in as you know that's definitely a key in lacrosse you got to be available for behind the net that's a key as well in hockey obviously with soccer we do not play behind the net there but again Morrissey great awareness on the field the two get that in and she's giving the thumbs up getting some approval there 4-3 lead uh, now. I think she was actually surprised about her rebound coming right to her there. I think she was, too. We were all surprised when we see the bench doing a little dance there as well. I was hoping to see some gritties, you know, maybe some grizzly <laughs> dances just so that we can keep on taunting them. But we don't as we have the face-off now. I would definitely like to see one of our players bust the gritty. I believe that is the only celebration that anyone should ever do in their entire career as an athlete. Well, I mean, right now, we got to troll the Grizzlies. We got to do their walkout dance. <laughs> as Panthers have it, trying to look to expand the lead as they have that lead for the first time today. Charging down in the middle. Doesn't see the shot lane, but takes the foul. And this is going to be a dead ball. This could possibly be the third dead ball score for the Panthers. As that was Megan... Guerra there, the sophomore defender, breaching the defense there as she has a dead ball opportunity there and passes it back. Oh, a little passing play, tic-tac-toe attempt, but doesn't quite reach the toe level of scoring. Yeah, Annika Carlson there, I believe, got bumped. I don't think they called it, but I do think that she was bumped. Oh, no, they did. At least a dead ball, not the penalty, not calling it a check. Oh, no, they did call the check, so we got a power play here, attempt four. As Bittis is going to start. No, that's not Bittis. Sorry, that is Annika Carlson there. My bad. We'll start with the ball. Waiting for the whistle. It goes. Passed off. Coming in deep. She takes it all by herself and scores for the Panthers. And that is Megan Guerra, the defender. Not very often that we see defenders score goals here in lacrosse. 5-3 now, Chapman with their second, excuse me, their third open play goal now. Now Chapman's starting to get the open play going and the assist by Annika Carlson as we have our 
PA announcer and sports information director Stephen Olveda announced here at Wilson Field again now. 5-3 Chapman. No timeout yet from Whittier. Are you surprised? As we have a replay here before you answer that as Guerra just took it right in, right over three defenders there to the right side of the net. I, you know, I, it's surprising to see that Whittier hasn't slowed down the game with a timeout, especially after taking a penalty like that. You'd think you're going to see something, but maybe uh, one more, then we'll see a whistle. But mm -hmm. looks like coach for the Poets is just trying to make sure the ladies play their game and they're Maybe she doesn't think it's completely out of their control yet. Yeah, and Kyle, right now, as we just heard in the stadium, scoring these goals right now is easy as one, two, three for the Panthers. Well, ABC, one, two, three, Ricketts with it. She passed it off over to that far side. Now it's at the top of the key again, back to Ricketts. I think Chapman's starting to smell the potential game here, like a potential maybe knock up on I'm not going to say it yet. It's still very early, but I think Chapman has Whittier right where they want him. They are definitely feeling it. The momentum has shifted in this one in the Panthers' favor as they have scored five goals in this second period alone. Ricketts with it in the middle, taking off some defense, and a low shot, but big save there for the Whittier Poets. Yeah, I get, I get what Morris he was trying to do there, but I think there was no need to rush that shot. You're up 5-3. You know, you want to get that sixth goal, obviously, but, again, no need to rush. You could have passed it out for a better shot opportunity there. That's Haley Hughes-Gill in net for the Poets. That save's probably going to help create a little bit of momentum shift for the Poets as there's been pretty much nothing that hasn't gone in for the Panthers in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, and also key for Haley's confidence as well. She's given up five goals in under 10 minutes here. So definitely need that confidence to come back as well. Whittier working the ball in. Shot attempt. It's law on the ground, but save. Possible dead ball, though. Hey, that's okay. You'll, you'll take that, you know? In a hero, in net, again. Had a rough first quarter, but this second quarter... Nothing's really happened, so I can't really say that she's been dominant, but hey, she was asked to step up there. She did. See if she can be the Panther hero today. Big save there off the shot. Looked like it was going to go high, but shot low, and she was quick to read that one. Big that was, save. Yeah, that was a great play there. Fast stick movement there. That was the key. The stick movement, boom, right on point, able to track that one down. We got some sticks down. Is this going to be a timeout? And there's that timeout you've been looking for, Josh. Finally, after that big save off the drop ball, looks like Coach has seen enough and needs to get her ladies a rest. Yeah, I think that's much needed, too. Just to give them, you know, kind of a, a talk here. As you know, the strategy really working in the first, not working here. But we do have a replay of the save here. And that did bounce first, but again, though, the stick was there as for Hira not having the height that Haley has, you know, going for the lower option on the save, which I think was the smart idea here as definitely the Whittier coach looks a little more animated now, trying to really relay that message to her players. We got coach here for the Panthers telling the ladies, hey, you're playing your game. We've got them where we want them. We're playing our structure Looks like he's talking about stick control, positive stick control, because that, as we've seen here, some of the bigger mistakes and leading up to these scoring opportunities has been stick fouls. Yeah, so. yeah, you know, the stick fouls were early. The check by Ferreira was early, but ever since then, much more calm, cool, and collected. I think maybe it was just the senior day got getting to them wanting to win because a lot of the family members are here some of them you know from out of state even all the way across the country you know here as i believe we do have we have someone from massachusetts on the team I, and I new york that. from sag harbor new york so again i saw that there were some family members with her during her introduction as well that is sophie Bittis representing new york so we have got all coast to coast coverage here 
at Wilson Field. Yes, as we can see the seniors there, Bittis, LaCitra, Close, Melani Ferreira, and Jessica Ricketts. As we have a lot of sun hats here in the stands, definitely a good move for today. Oh yeah. Ironically, uh, the shade here at Wilson Field is on the other side where not a lot of the fans sit. The, the, the sun is a lot more uh, yeah. in the face of the fans right now. I'm very surprised no one is moving over. <laughs> I mean, if that was me, you will get a whole section almost to yourself as well. You know, you can relax a little bit more. Right. Really get in there and get some cheers going on the other oh, side. Yeah. That would open things up. As this game here will resume with 5.26 left in the second quarter. 5-3 lead for Chapman. Ball's back in play as Whittier has the ball behind the cage. Trying to probe into the middle. Big bouncing ball, and the Panthers come up with it. Yeah, that is number 15, Liv Huntley Robin Robinson there. Robertson, excuse me, picking that one up. And having a little bit of a trouble getting out of the defensive half, but now streaking down Lindsey Huss for the Panthers. Pass it off. Goal for Ferreira. Key player stepping up. Ferreira, had a, she had that nice assist to close on that last goal. And now Ferreira, the recipient of a great assist there. First goal of the game. Shaking that hand a little bit. Hopefully she is... Okay, there and now a 6 3 lead for Chapman with just over a minute to go before halftime. And I will say right now, as we have playing in the stadium again, another music reference Chapman all the way up right now with their play as we have a replay here of Ferreira just again. She almost had a wide open lane again. I was criticizing Chapman for that. Whittier now given that wide open lane. How do you think that happens? You know, we've seen that now with both sides. Now, it's just way. The way that the Panthers have been able to play off of the ball, having those streaking forwards with the ball carrier. My apologies. I said Lindsey Huss was carrying it. It was actually Parker Huss that carried that one down all the way through and made that assist off there. So when you get that streaking midfielder like we have right now, it's so important for the attackers to get in a position and keep moving the feet along with the ball carrier because that's going to cause all of the defense to back up and lose their footing and lose their positioning, and the, the Panthers will take advantage of it as they just did. Yeah, again, 6-3 here. Our score bug is not updated yet. We apologize for that. That is up to the crew down there on the field, not part of our graphics. So we are at the mercy of the stage hands down there. Uh, they're a part of our athletic department. Yes, as now we have again... Megan Guerra really starting to push the pace there as she's still back behind the attack area here. With the balls, Ricketts at the top, and she hands it off. Pass back up. That's Annika Carlson and Ricketts that are usually making those plays up at the top. Now it's on the far side. Back up top again. I apologize, I made a mistake there. We had a 113 on our score, but we still have around three and a half minutes left until halftime. That was my mistake there. We had a little score malfunction, but it's okay here. We'll get through it. I have faith in our officiating. I crew do down too. There. They got the time. I do too. As I believe, what do we have happening here? Is this another dead ball? It another looks like it. Ball, yes, yeah. as Guerra has it. Bouncer and save there for Hughes. Yeah, good save there. I think Guerra, never, she never really had a space there to get that shot off. It was really rushed. Looks like she lost her balance. I couldn't tell if she got pushed or not, though. Whittier streaking down the line. Coming in hot. She still has it. That's Sepulveda with it. Oh, dropped stick there. For Whitney, that is Samantha Nimmo, who just dropped her stick there, but she was able to pick it back up. Just lost the stick there. Maybe the sweat, you know, really playing into effect there. Yeah, a little bit of sweat. Gets slashed, and zoop, there goes the stick. But here come the Panthers, streaking down hot. 
Back over the far side. She put curls off. That was Sabrina Wachuta coming down. Her sister, Brooke Wachuta, also on the team. Number six. Number five and number six are two twins of the team. And Parker House again into that attacking zone already. Passed it out this time, but she's been very, very crucial so far late in this second quarter. Getting opportunities for the Panthers. Parker House up at the top. Switching it off. Now back down. Olivia Ang with it. Ball's down. They're going to give it to Whittier. Let's use Gill. Getting this ball back into play. Trying to stand strong in net for her poets. And if you're Whittier here, Kyle, I think it's key that to get a goal here. Now, you know, we are with World Chapman Sports Broadcast Open. We've got to talk about it from a Whittier fan perspective here as well. You know, you have that great first quarter. Second quarter is not going the way that you want. You know, a goal here gets that momentum back. Yeah, Whittier needs to put on the brakes on this Panther train rolling down the tracks. We'll see what they can do here. Slow down the game. Play that outside perimeter like they were in the first period. It's just so interesting how a little bit of control can get either offensive creating or it can completely slow you down and kind of put you in a grind. Whereas those, you try to rush it and those plays just don't come together. Just like that, a little bit of a rush pass into the middle. However, we got a dead ball for the Poets. Yeah, although Molly Landon there, she kind of did a little spin pass out of that. She found to put some pizzazz on that, but that did not prevail there. Ooh, big save by Hura. Again, Landon putting some power on that swing. I think she wanted to try to overpower Hira there in goal. As you already saw that she has fast stick movement. Try to overpower with speed of the actual ball. Passed up. Panthers entering the attacking half on the near side. Pass down low. Working in <laughs> big cross pass there. That was almost the whole field width. As we have 15 seconds left here in the first half, let's see if Chapman can get off a buzzer beater here to end it. Seven seconds left. Working up at the top. Shot. It's bounced. Oh, it's at the feet of Hughes Gill. And she's going to let the buzzer go. Yes. And our first half is completed. Yes, as we now have a 6-3 score at halftime here for the Chapman Panthers. Kyle, what do you think were some of the main keys of the first half there? Well, the way that the Whittier Poets attacked the game at the beginning in the first quarter definitely helped give them that lead. They were a lot more patient with the way that they, they played their offense. They weren't um, too, too keen on probing into the middle, cutting through. They were playing around more on that outside perimeter, but with that patience came some goals. Whereas Panthers, I felt, were squeezing the stick a little too hard in the first quarter. But second quarter completely changed, Josh. Yeah, yeah, you're very much right about that. Chapman really able to get the open play going. They had the two dead ball goals early, within the first minute, actually, which really helped them come back, make it 3-2. And then open play with Ferreira, Ricketts, Carlson, Morrissey, and Parker House as well later on in that second quarter, really, really getting it going. As now they lead 6-3 here at halftime. And if you're Whittier... What adjustments do you think are going to be made? Uh, Whittier is definitely going to need to readjust and play the game that they started to play in that first quarter. They need to slow down the game. They need to have Sepulveda take charge, get the ball in, work that physical play, try to get some drop balls for yourself, and then also work it out on the outside uh, so you can kind of get the defense to be, to yeah. be slowed down. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we're only up here in the booth, and I think someone in our broadcast team has a much better view on the sideline. Justin Lee, I believe. We have you ready for us down on the sidelines. What was it like down there? Thanks, Josh and Kyle. 
Yeah, down here on the field has been interesting. First quarter, Whittier looking like they took in the advantage. And then all of a sudden, you come out in the second qu quarter, and Chapman Panthers seem like they flipped the switch. They decided to double down on the Poets right now, looking pretty good so far. But I couldn't help think about you guys talking about the gritty earlier. Um, might have to take you guys up on a little gritty challenge later, but that's a different story. But here on the field, it seemed early on that the Poets were taking a lot of frustration from the Panthers as they were body checking them a lot. But then the Fli Panthers basically flipped a switch on them and then came out strong. So they're looking to continue that momentum here coming into the next qu qu half of things here. But I'll send it back up to you guys up in there in the booth. All right, yes, thank you very much, Justin, for those, for that great analysis down there. And we know Kyle the Justin can't gritty. We've seen it in person. He's got a gritty on him. And now, as I believe we have some first half highlights here coming up. Now let's see what we got here. Definitely a lot of action in that first half. As Whittier opened up the scoring, we thought we had a save there, but just rolled off of the back heel of Hero there. And then finally, Chapman gets on the board after a drop ball. Yeah, and then there's Annika Carlson there with the other dead ball goal there, making that 3-2. And now we have the great pass from Ferreira to close with the bounce goal. This is when Chapman really, really started to take over. And now here with the amazing rebound, Josie Morrissey from behind the net with the angle there, putting some spin on that one to get it past Van Hughes there in the net. And then our defense stepping up, the freshman getting on the board. Love to see our junior or our younger classmen getting up on the score sheet because they're the future of this Panther squad. Mm -hmm. And just a really back and forward first half, Josh. I, yep. I really enjoyed it. Something that we did see though. Uh, one of our Panthers took a penalty on checking. Yeah, Melani Ferreira early on in the in the game out of frustration there when it was not going too well for the Panthers. So when we have our fans at home, they're watching the men's game. They can completely clear out the 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 players with a check. Here mm -hmm. it's a penalty. Can you can you give us the explanation behind that, Josh? Yeah, well, you know, we want to just have people stay safe, you know, especially because they're not wearing, you know much to protect themselves as we there as you can see is the check here i believe coming up here that was one yeah. of the checks a different check not the check that we were talking about but that's definitely something that you cannot do is there's no protective gear back there so you, know, you can't just be doing that and i believe we have an example as kyle here we have our own handy dandy lacrosse stick yeah. as this will actually be if i get to hold it my first time ever holding a lacrosse stick as you guys can see here we got the net the first for everybody. The bottom. Josh, yeah, you know? there is a first for everyone, you know. Don't everyone know anything somewhere. here, what I'm doing, so you want to show me what I'm doing here? Yeah, so the way that lacrosse works, uh, you're, especially with the women's game, everything, your stick is your complete weapon of choice. You can jab at them, you can try to poke at them, but you cannot slash from above. Mm -hmm. That's definitely where we're getting a lot of these drop balls, these whacks from above, or the pushes from behind. With the men's game, you can have a check. So uh, they're going to come up, say a player, you're going to angle off. You want your, you're, you're trying to use angles. That's what checking really is. It's using angles and your body to separate the player from the ball, right? Or in hockey, the puck. So if you're coming at me and I'm trying to read your angle, say your offense, you're coming at me as a defender on the men's side, I can check him and come through. As long as I'm not hitting high and I'm not hitting in the, like into his hip area, you're, you're able to check. On the women's game, that is a no-go, Josh. That is a no-go. Only stick checking is allowed. Yeah, so that's again, what led to that. Yeah, and I can definitely know, when you don't have any force behind, it doesn't feel that bad, but if you have force behind that, I could definitely see why, especially because that ending, I believe, is metal there too. Oh yeah, that's pure metal, and if you're thinking someone's running as fast as they can, oh, and, yeah. you know, an unmovable object hits an, uh, or unstoppable force, that's definitely going to hurt. And when you're not wearing a helmet or protective gear, that is concussion worthy right yeah, there. Yeah, we saw uh, Lauren Jade Sepulveda get hit early in the head. She was okay, but that was something that I was very concerned about, potentially getting that head injury there as well. Definitely. And, well, as we move on, we're going to take a little break here. And um, 
We're going to have a wonderful uh, break here. We're going to get excited for the second mm -hmm. half. I'm already excited, Kyle. Yeah, I, I can't know. wait. I'm excited. Josh, I'm Kyle Carr. This is Joshua Feinhurst, CSBN. Second half action, heading your way. Wilson Field, hope you enjoyed that break. I know I did, and I feel refreshed. Do you think these players are going to feel refreshed, Josh? I mean, I, I hope they do, Kyle. You know, it's definitely quite warm out down there now, probably into the 90s now almost, as the high today it was set to be 89, you know, before this game even started. We have the players back out here for some warm-ups, and I believe we're getting started any second now as I'm looking over and I see Jessica Rick is already in the face-off circle. Awesome. And yeah, what what does that heat do to these players when when you get into the later stages of the game? You know, what kind of factor does that play on the players? Yeah, well, Kyle, you know, I would definitely say that these players, you know, definitely messes with you. You get more tired faster, especially for dehydrated. That's the thing you cannot be in these situations at all is dehydrated, Kyle. As I know, we've been taking sips throughout our broadcast. We hope all of our crew and these players have been doing the same as well. And we're talking about with that sunshine, these white jerseys of the Panthers, they kind of create a glare. So do you think that'll affect the goalies at all? Or do you think they're so locked in that that's not even going to be an issue? I mean, I don't think it should be an issue. You know, I mean, maybe if there's a higher shot, it could be. But for those lower shots, you know, I don't think it will be an issue. The one thing I want to know, Kyle, is are there reflective goggle options, you know, like transition leds? glasses like I have on right now 
I know. I you know that is a great question. I wonder if what the uh, the rules are on tinted goggles. I know like certain sports you can only have so much of a tint or you can't have a tint, but mm -hmm. that is something I would have to look into on for the women's game. What what level of tint you're allowed to have? As an early penalty there on Guerra on Lauren Jade Spolta, who's been very quiet after that almost dominant first quarter for her. As the Whittier Poets came up with the initial face-off, and now they have it in the attacking half of the field. Trying to work in the middle, but the Panthers get in the way. Drop ball down. Looks like we're going to have Panthers come up with a possession change called by the ref. Yeah, very important there. Chapman getting the ball early to start as well. Ricketts comes up. No, that wasn't it. Was a little short pass there. Kinda. It was not Ricketts. Excuse me. That My apologies there. Push from behind. That's going to be a penalty. As that was number 16 for Chapman taken. That that was Sophie LaCitra there, one of the seniors being nominated being honored here this afternoon. And that's Kedra Hall that is the guilty party for the Whittier Poets. And Panthers are going to have a one-up women advantage right now. Yeah, power play here again for the Panthers. Tossed in deep, but a huge steal by Whittier. That's Sepulveda again. Now she's putting on the Rockets. Trying to come in shorthanded for her poets. Yeah, she's racing down the field right now here, Kyle. You know, gets all the way back behind the net before anyone else, but now decides to pass it out to, I believe that was Peyton Klimmer, who's been pretty quiet. Again, she's been in a lot of the draw point battles as well. Not really, you know, impacting the game so far like we thought. Yeah, and one of the top scorers for Whittier here has the ball on the outside. Now it's passed back around to the far side. Down low. Working the goal line. Coming in. Panthers come up with the steal. Now, even though Whittier doesn't score on that offensive opportunity, they did kill a lot of time on that power play. As Panthers trying to take advantage of having one woman up, but... That's slowly going to be dwindling down yeah. here. Yeah, and with that steal, actually, it was Chloe casting in there the sophomore defender for Chapman getting in there early. Oh, big save on Ricketts. Yeah, that was a big save there for Haley in goal. You know, you don't want to give up another easy, well, not easy goal, but a quick goal, you know, in the second quarter. Less than three minutes gone by all. Still a 6-3. So, again, if you're Whittier, defense already improved. No, I haven't had as many dead ball opportunities for Chapman. Hughes Gill's going to get this one back into play. She still has it down at the goal. Ferreira, though, that was a great effort. Did you see that, Kyle, where she was getting her stick up in the way of the pass out? Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on Hughes Gill. They weren't really giving her any passing lanes. That's what took so long for the ball to get back up into play. Goggles on the ground. Those don't come off easy, so a little uh, activity happening with the sticks, it looks like. Yeah, we're back in action. Yeah, so hopefully those stay on there. <laughs> Streaking down comes Whittier's number 19. That's Olivia Ham. Not to be confused with the professional soccer player, Mia Ham. Whittier battling. Panthers giving him a hard time. Sepulveda, as we've seen before, she's not afraid to take a whack or two. Yeah, she Rick tries to get in. Yeah, Ricketts had the ball for a second there, too. I thought she was able to come up with that steal, but she was unable to there. As Whittier still has a great opportunity here to score with Peyton Clemmer behind the net. Oh, she shakes and shimmies some Panthers off. She almost got triple, quadruple teamed. And we're going to have a dead ball. Yeah, you don't want this if you're Chapman here early. You have a great second quarter. You no, know, you don't want 
you know, to let them back in this game here with a dead ball Klimmer, one of our key players, you know. This is something that should be almost guaranteed for her. Hopefully, though, a stop happens here. Let's see if Hero can put a stop to this dead ball. Coming from the side. Big save, but a streaking defender comes in. That was Liv. See if there's going to be a penalty here. Yeah, that was Liv Huntley Roberts in there. Yeah, as Klimmer comes up a little bit shaken up there, I think she will be okay. Yeah, we're going to have a cross check here. Call assessed on the Panthers. Yeah, that was Liv Robertson as we just said, you know, definitely not something you want to see again. Checking early in the second half. You know, I was, we were saying that during our halftime segment that we thought the nerves were out for Chapman, that they were feeling very, very comfortable and confident. But that may not be the case here so far. So they're going to be a woman up on the Whittier side. Also a dead ball opportunity. So this could make things interesting if Whittier can close the gap on these Panthers. As Klimmer again is going to take this one to start. Oh, snipe. Hero thought she had it, but it goes in for the Poets, closing the gap. That was much needed there for our dear friend Klimmer. Just put that one right in the back of the net. Just That was just... Straight on, just back of the net shot. I mean, I'm on. I'm honestly at a loss for words there, as that is Klimmer's first goal of this game, as Nimmo leading them still with two. As we have a replay here, and let's see how she got this going. Really, just one step in. Here is not ready there in goal. I mean, that would definitely confuse me if I was in goal. I was expecting a run up, maybe even a pass out there, not a straight on from the line. Just a beautiful snipe about 10 yards out from the goal, 10, 15 yards, and right on that far post, beats Hero clean. Face off to start this one. Yes, yeah, we'll be able to give you those references as you guys can probably tell watching. We are playing on the Chapman football field here, so we'll be able to give you some pretty accurate measurements here, wouldn't you say, Kyle, of distance in yards here. That is one of the convenient things about having a multi-sport field. A lot of markings out there, but helps us with the measurements, kind of get a feel of just how big the lacrosse field is. Yes, yeah, they are using basically end zone to end zone here. <laughs> so the same dimensions as the football field, including a little more past the sidelines. Panthers working in the attacking zone. Trying to work the perimeter. Whittier finally stops the train run, running down the tracks. But can the Panthers get the momentum back and increase that lead back to three goals? At the top, that's Annika Carlson who just passed it off to Ricketts. Ricketts streaking in the middle. Shakes around. Low shot. Goal. Panthers. That was a really good sick movement there by Rick as she was in the middle. I was thinking she was going to try to do that dunk goal again, but no, she went down and under there. That was almost like a reverse layup in basketball there. That's what I would compare that one to. That was some great stick control, great body control too. She was kind of fading away there. A fadeaway goal, is that the first? I'm, I'm going to coin that term, I think. I haven't heard that said yet in lacrosse. So fadeaway goal there for Jessica Rick. It's her second of the day as we have a replay here. Let's see. Shakes there, drops low, just completely baffles everybody. Yeah, that baffled me too. I was like, was she going for a little pass there, a lower pass? But no, she went right for the goal. She's going to take a quick break after that one as it is well deserved. Back up to a three goal margin, 7-4 lead for Chapman. After that dead ball score for Whittier, that was a great response, Kyle. You can see uh, right there on the sidelines the body language of these ladies out here playing. Clearly the heat and the level of competition wearing them down, but they're still having fun. They still got smiles ready for their next shift out there. 
I mean, yeah, you got to, you know, you signed up for this, you know. I'm sure they knew coming into this game for at least the past few days that it was going to be warm. If they watched the Chapman News 5 Day for Nestor forecast, you know, they definitely would have known that. Yeah, our uh, live newscast on Chapman News definitely gave the rundown that it was going to be the hottest day of the week today. That was our wonderful Alexander Konyarts given the weather. And now we have a dead ball here at about midfield. Whittier was trying to sneak one there, but that was a Panthers ball, change of possession. Hey, Kyle, I'm all for that. I'm not gonna lie, if I'm the coach of a team, you know, if someone misses, someone doesn't think they're doing the call right there, you know, you gotta try to go for it. Especially when you're losing, I'm all for that, you know? If the ref miss, makes a mistake, that's the ref, you know? As the coach, I'll say, hey, you know? Definitely, just like in soccer, Ball goes out. You try to take that throw. You never know. It might oh, fluster yeah. him. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. You catch a defender lacking in basketball. You know, I've seen that so many times where they don't think the ball's being inbound. Like the Mavericks-Warriors game, as I'm sure you remember, that very infamous play where the Mavericks thought they had the ball. Even tried to protest the loss because of it, but were unsuccessful. Out-of-bounds plays can be the bane of your existence especially when it comes to the postseason, which will be happening next week for the Panthers. But if Whittier can't come away with a win, their season will be ending today. Yeah, and I think that's starting to set in here middle of the third quarter. Again, the game nowhere close to over. Still have over a quarter and a half left of lacrosse here. But going to that fourth quarter, you want to make it close at, at least. Panthers with a three-goal lead as Whittier has it in the attacking half of the pitch. They got it up high on that far side, trying to work the perimeter again. This is the Whittier style. They play a lot more of a perimeter game and then have those streaking attacks just like that. As I believe that goal for Whittier was scored by Trella Davidson, the midfielder. As what if I had a whistle as this goal has not yet counted? Oh, no. Yeah, there was a whistle for a drop ball. They're not going to give the goal. We had it for a second there, but no, we're not going to get it. So Davidson is going to start with the dead ball opportunity. Hero comes up big with the save. She caught that one. That was a direct catch there as we see the fans in the sidelines loving that one. Oh, was oh, that a is little misplay there. Out of reach of the Chapman player. I believe that was Sophie Bittis going downfield there. Now Whittier after that change of possession trying to come back into the offensive attack. Panthers giving her a hard time, but she shakes around the midfielders and gets in there. But she's got to rush back so she doesn't get a too many men delay a game. Too many women, if you will. We have another penalty there. I think that was another high stick up there, Kyle, as we talked about at halftime. Hopefully, the viewers at home can understand that a little bit better. Yeah, that high cross check not allowed here in the women's game. Dead ball for Whittier. Shot, and that's a save for Hero. She's going to get this ball back in play once the rest of the team is set. Good pass there. Oh, just bobbled it. Now we got an odd man rush with the goal for the Poets. I believe that is Nimmo. Yes, that will be Samantha Nimmo, one of our key players there, the attacker, the senior attacker for the Whittier Poets. Third goal of the game for her, Kyle. She's come to play today. And again, name we're not calling Lauren Jade Spolda. Again, it's been the other players, which is good to see. But the other thing now that Chapman has to focus on, stopping the others. You've quieted down Lauren Jates pulled the four the time being. You got to quiet down, you know, Samantha Nimmo. She does have three goals already. She does have a hat trick on the day. So we can say that we are able to call a hat trick game today, Kyle. That is good for the Poets. We see here that odd man rush, just a quick turnover bobble there in the defense zone. And the Poets had three back. And they took full advantage of that quick little passing play. Three on O, nothing you can do there. Yeah, I believe, as you just said, Hero not in the goal fully there. So, again, that's the main question 
of how far do you want to abandon your goal? How far do you want to go out? Is it five yards? Is it two yards? Maybe it's not, <laughs> never. You got to always stay. Well, lacrosse definitely a lot different with the dimensions of the net. But the Panthers with a big turnover after the faceoff, they come up with it streaking down. Big right in the middle. Oh, rolls just into Hughes Gills. And basket. Yeah, Ferreira there couldn't quite control that pass. She had a great look at a shot there, too. But listen, it's okay. You know, you now just have to get back on defense, keep your head up. However, we do have Sepulveda quick into the attacking zone. This game is opening up both ends, starting to quickly speed up, streaking down the middle. Not a lot of set plays like we were seeing. Both ends just rushes. I think that's a good thing, though, at some, time, at some point throughout this game, Kyle. I feel like the set plays, each team has kind of figured the other out here. I think it's kind of time to just see, hey, let's just try to score in whatever way is the most effective for us right now. Uh, attack with speed, transitional play. Huge in lacrosse when you need that those timely goals. Because we're down 7-5, to five, Chapman up. Whittier only down by two. And they're working it now in the attacking area. A couple bounces. We're going to have a dead ball. Very dangerous area. Yeah, again, though, Kyle, this is almost looking like the first quarter with the time being taken off of the clock. Where Whittier was really able to kind of control the pace a little bit more here. As hopefully Hira is able to get this save here as Nimmo is going to start with this one for this opportunity. Big stop there, and it comes out. That was some defense. Didn't even get to our goaltender. Yeah, much needed defense there. As Again, Chapman, I think she try to control the pace a little more here. Whittier's kind of controlled it throughout this entire quarter. No need to rush with that two-goal lead. Play your game. Put it into effect. They know what they need to do. They just got to slow down, stop squeezing the sticks too hard. Work their magic as they're starting to make some passing plays here. Outside the perimeter, down in deep in the middle. That was our defender trying to get in there again. Yeah, I mean, I feel like after that goal, you have the confidence, but you also need to understand, hey, listen, I'm going to try again. I like that. You try to get that attacking mentality again, try to get into the goal. But if you continually can't get in there, I think it's time to say, hey, listen, I got to take a step back on that end of the the field here wouldn't you say so Kyle save that energy for my primary role of a defender definitely a very important aspect with the lacrosse way of, uh, of setting up the field and how offsides work it is intriguing seeing a defender on the attack so that means someone has to stay back on the defensive half But Megan Guerra, our sophomore, she has just been working real hard up there at the top. She got on the scorecard earlier. Let's see if she can get something again as she passes it off. And now it's passed again to the back far side. That's Bittis with the ball here representing New York. She received the pass from Parker House. Let's see if Parker gets it again. She's going to streak in. Parker had that dominant second quarter, really helping the Panthers see his opportunities to have an oh, amazing she causes six a turnover quarter. right there. And again, I think a little bit of a high check there, and the recipient of that one is going to be Jai Battle, the midfielder there. I think how's, she was just trying to make it look like she was running her thing. Trying to pull maybe a, an embellishment call there. Yeah. A little miscommunication as officiating trying to get their message across to the players, and now the ball's back in play. There's a quick change on the fly for the Poets. Shaking off the defense. It's Chella Davidson running all the way down our right sideline here. Back to Davidson. Little passing back and forward there for Whittier. A 
again, this perimeter play, it just kind of kills the clock, lulls the defense to sleep a little bit, and then they penetrate. It's Kiedra Hall, number 11, that's been passing it back and forth with Davidson. Yeah, you know, I think Whittier right now, I mean, I like that they're controlling the clock for them, but at one point, do you shoot? They've been controlling the clock. They've been getting dead ball opportunities, but they haven't really been getting shots on goal in open play as we have another dead ball here. Speaking of dead ball opportunities. And that leads to a goal for the, pan for the Poets. As was that Nimmo again? I it was Samantha Nimmo again. That is her fourth goal of this game. 7-6 now is the lead for Chapman. And if you're Chapman, do you think that you're able to play out the rest of this quarter, or do you think you need a timeout here? I think we're going to let them play out. I think, Coach, it's too close to the end of the, the quarter. Let them play out. Play some defense. He's probably communicating down there. As we do have a Simple replay commands. real quick here, not to cut you off, but Samantha <laughs> Nimmo there. Again, had another wide open lane. That's two now that she's really had right to the goal. You know, Chapman, again, as I've said, they were playing some better defense, but not there. You know, Hira needs help on that back end to maybe even prevent that shot from happening in the first place, Kyle. Yeah, it's surprisingly with Whittier playing that kind of perimeter game, uh, the Panthers are taking a lot of dead ball, or giving the Poets a lot of dead ball opportunities with those hacks and whacks. So it's hard because you want to play that physical game. You don't want to just let them get into your middle area of the crease, but also got to play smart and reliable lacrosse because we the, these dead balls are just going to be the bane of their existence if they can't stop that game yes yes you are very much right here the key here is hold no more goals you do not want to go into this fourth quarter tied if you are the panthers oh the dead ball trying to get to it and they're going to give it to the panthers shaked him off now she's coming up we're streaking down. Far side. It's Annika Close there. Not Annika Close, excuse Annika me, Carlson. Annika Carlson. Yes, using. Close. Yes, I, I was close <laughs> there on that pronunciation. I, I will say that. She's got it down low behind the net. Now it's up in the middle. Up high. Now Carlson has it. Back to Guerra. Worked around to that far side. Down low along the goal line. Tried to sneak something there. Coming in hot. Cannot get the defender off her. Just going to pass it low. Almost a bobble there. 40 seconds left here in this quarter. See if Chapman can end on a buzzer beater. Ferreira with it. Couple lanes crossing down low. If you see those forwards. They're trying to move and create some confusion. Back up to Carlson. 22 seconds on the clock. A shot is off, off the goalie. Panthers get to it. They're going to try to bring it in quick. Passed in. Drop down. Big save by Hughes Gill. Yes. That would have been dangerous. Yeah, that was a great play. That was Annika Close there on the shot as I believe Whittier's not going to get an opportunity here as the third quarter is going to come to an end with Chapman still up by one but conceding was I believe all three were dead ball goals so again their open play defense has been good but you can't keep letting them have those dead ball opportunities so Kyle what do you think you're going in to the fourth and final quarter here on this senior day do you think Whittier can have a chance here to clinch a playoff berth or does Chapman honor their seniors with a victory here I think we definitely have a very tight game running down the rest of this fourth quarter. It's going to be very close. It's going to be a nail biter. However, the Panthers, they have that lead. They have the ability with the home fans, the home crowd behind them. It's senior night. I think they're going to have the determination to come out, play a much more disciplined fourth quarter. We saw how they came out in the second quarter. Seems like the the pitch is tilted in that side of the field because all of our scoring has been on that half of the pitch. 
So I think the Panthers have the opportunity here with the lead to maintain that lead and come away with the win. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that happening. As you said, Whittier just scoring on that side of the field as well. All of the scoring seems to be towards the right side of the field. So with Chapman now going that way, do you think maybe that's the side they feel better on again? That is their sideline. So you again, know, you're closer to the coach, closer to hearing communications. We have a quick replay here as we have Jay battle with that, as we have the check there that happened. I believe that was Sophie LaCitra with the check. Yeah, that is something that cannot be happening as we've pointed out, especially after we just gave all of you viewing wherever you may be there, that quick rundown. You guys can definitely see now how it impacts the game, how those penalties really impact the game with the the ball opportunities and now Woodyard's coach is feeling a lot better about themselves now Kyle wouldn't you say I think she's definitely proud of her team right now they they've got some momentum in in their side I think she's reminding them that you know they're only one out and they've they've had the scoring opportunities obviously their game plan is working they're getting those drop balls and those dead balls I think what needs to happen for them though they got to go to the net more. It can't just be dead balls that gives them the scoring opportunities. They got to work those perimeter plays, but also go north to south and get towards the net. Panthers, on the other hand, need to play a more disciplined game and stop giving up those dead balls and get the ball in their offensive half so they can try to build this lead back up to at least a three goal lead. Yeah, one goal lead is definitely not safe right now with 15 minutes left on the clock here for Chapman. You know, Kyle, I would say right now in this fourth quarter, motion's gotta be high. I was saying at halftime, you know, how we were excited for the second half already. It's lived up to the hype that we wanted it to live up to for sure. And let's see what this fourth quarter has in store for us. As you we can see, Hughes Gill giving her pipes the love that they need. That way she knows where she is positionally in her net. I know one of my favorite goalies in hockey, Marc-Andre Fleury, he uh, thanks both his posts in English and Canadian, or French, sorry, English and can French because he doesn't know if they were made in French Canada or if they are made in Canada or if they are made in America. So he thanks them in both languages. Hey, you know, you know hopefully it's been working for him as Whittier takes possession here with Peyton Clemmer quickly down the field. Back up high. Lacrosse is actually the oldest sport in America. Uh, it was a Native American sport founded in the East Coast area of Canada and America. So I guess we got to thank our goalposts also in the Native American tongue, which I'm sure none of us here speak. But we're doing it in spirit as Whittier ties it. Yeah, that was Lauren Jade Sepulveda, someone who we were saying was a little quiet this game on the goal side. Gets that goal there. I didn't, that went in so fast because it bounced back out. I thought that hit, maybe it hit here a stick, but it didn't there. 7-7 seven, seven. quickly, just as we were giving you all a nice little history lesson on a weekend, you know? As, yes. <laughs> with that goal there, ties the game 7-7. Seven, seven. And you know, the history, speaking of history, of these two teams, 10-9 win for Chapman at Whittier. Very close game there. Zapolda with the power bounce shot there. Honestly, a sigh of relief, I think, from her in that celebration. And you saw there she was taking a check as she went for the shot. Called that a last chance effort there. And it worked out for her on the score sheet, not only with assists and ground balls, but now with a goal. Yeah, yeah, you know, definitely needed that but Kyle you know what else what other sport was founded in Canada hmm. basketball I didn't know this until recently James Naismith was Canadian founded in Canada nice see Canada's got all the good stuff poutine hockey lacrosse and basketball yeah baseball got the Blue Jays hey, let's go it is Playoff season, though, as I'm sure everyone at home knows, we got NBA playoffs, we got NHL playoffs, and we're about to have our Skyac playoffs. And our men's lacrosse team trying to find a way into the MCLA playoffs. Yeah, yeah, having a very dominant season on that end. I remember we got to 
broadcast when they played UCLA. Not very often the Chapman plays UCLA in sports, but that was a big day. A lot of Bruins fans made that trip. I had the pleasure of doing sideline for that game. And Kyle, that game was a very heated one. A lot of heated matches here at Wilson Field as we have a 7-7 game between the Poets and the Panthers. Whittier the last to score and make this an even game. Panthers trying to get something going here as they have a dead ball, and that's kind of what got them going in the second quarter. Yeah, let's see who starts with it as it'll be Annika Carlson. Off the rebound, Panthers trying to come up, and it's going to be a poet ball. Again, this is a key defensive possession here. You had that lead. Don't want to give up the lead here. Again, still over 13 minutes left here in this game. Have a lot of time left, but just from your psychological standpoint, being up 6-3 at halftime, can't let Whittier get this again. And we'll see if Whittier slows down the clock here, or they try to go with pace. Whittier's fate literally in the hands of the players on the field and the Panthers as a win tonight will get them into the playoffs. However, a loss will unfortunately end the season as now they take the lead with the big goal. That is number 20 it's Molly on Landon. the Poets. That is Molly Landon on the goal there. Key, key goal for her. Landon, the attacker and midfielder, doing both out there. Huge, huge goal for Whittier as they take their first lead since the first quarter on this replay. Let's see what happens here. Lynn just gets it through. Hira and number 12 of Chapman. That is Sophie Pelton. So just literally, Kyle, right in between them. As again, here a little bit outside of the goal. I think what she needs to do, stay closer to the goal. Unless if you need to move around and try to stop the ball, get a save there. As I believe Olivia Robertson there might be talking to her about that exact thing. Yeah, some communication there from the goaltender to her defenders. And it is senior day here for Panthers, and that was a senior for Whittier taking the lead in the fourth. 13 minutes to play. Whittier started the game with the lead. Panthers took it in the second and had maintained it in the third, but now Whittier coming back with two quick goals to take the lead. Now, you know, and also something, Kyle, now. Sepulveda in the faceoff, the draw point battle here. Or I believe first one of the game. I could be wrong on that, but it's mainly been Peyton Klimmer and for Panthers the Poets. come up with the win. Streaking down Carlson. Trying to get something going for the Panthers. Nice pass into the middles, trying to get some shots off. Defense ate that up. Ricketts, Carlson, streaking in, shot, goal for the Panthers. I believe that was Carlson's second of the day besides that dead ball, her first open play goal. Much needed there for Chapman. That was their first goal in around a quarter, it feels like there. Monica Carlson getting right into the attacking zone. Hard shot, middle of the goal, literally right down the middle there. Right there, as we have a replay here, let's see. Carlson getting around Davidson. Right underneath Haley Hughes' stick there for the goal. Just great field awareness, great body control. 8-8 eight, eight now with around 12 minutes to go. As we have here in the stand, don't stop the party. Well, hopefully we want this party stops with the Chapman victory, Kyle. That is right, as they are getting ready on the sideline, pumping up their teammates. Celebrating that tying goal. Carlson, smart heads up play. She got around the defender and she used just perfect placement by shooting. She was going to the right and shoots that left side post that completely changes the direction of the ball. And now Panthers attacking strong here. Deep in the middle pass and we got a dead ball called. This could be key here for Chapman. Retake that lead. Again, still over 12 minutes left of lacrosse to be played. So no lead right now is safe. Let's see who will take it. I believe it will be Melani Ferreira, the senior. The junior, my bad, excuse me. Yeah, Ferreira with it. Whistle goes. Shot blocked by Hughes Gill. The Panthers run it out. They got it. They're going to pick it up. Again, good save there by Hughes Carlson. Gill. 
fast stick movement there as well as we still have Guerra the defender in the attack. Guerra, nice little pass off there to Ricketts. And they're going to get a flag. As we have some that's too easy chance starting. I don't know exactly from who, but we have those starting as Ricketts has it. Ricketts, shot, and it's goal. Ricketts, Panthers take the lead. Good play there from Ricketts. Have multiple goals on the day. Is that a hat trick for her? I believe it is a hat trick for her. And we will have that double checked at the end of the game. As again, we apologize for the graphic 9-8 now Chapman with just under 12 minutes left to play let's see this replay as Ricketts again wide open lane another one both teams giving each other wide open lanes now 9-8 Chapman we have a mass substitution for Chapman that drop ball is such an intriguing aspect of the women's game because it does not happen like that in the men's game and those lanes it's like when you're coming from that close of a 10-yard stop ball, do you go for the attacker? Do you try to cover the passing lanes? As a defender, there's so many options to try to go for. You kind of just hope your goalie's going to read that shot. That was a quick one off of Ricketts, and we got a lead Panthers 9-8. to Down low, right into the middle. Kicking it around, it's can all you do that? over. Can you do that in lacrosse? Because I know in a lot of sports, obviously soccer, if you're kicking, but everything else, I know basketball, you can't do the kicked ball. You know, I don't know how it works with hockey. I have a feeling you can't. So is that legal in, in lacrosse? Because that's the first time I've really seen that all game or in any of the games that I've been at so far. Yeah, so you can kick the ball. Uh, you can't step on it, but you can roll it along as you're trying to pick it up. You can't use your own hands to pick up the ball or anything like that. Hockey as well, you can use your skate to progress the puck forward. You cannot kick it into the net, though. So I don't think mm. you can kick it into the net either for lacrosse. But you are allowed to use that if you're just trying to forward the, the ground ball. That is definitely a legal play. Whittier here has the ball working around the far side into Sepulveda. She passes it into the middle, a back shot. But Hero right there. Not phased by that little over-the-back shot. No, yeah, I was like, okay, we got a little trick shot here going. You know, I was like, I was kind of wanting to see that one, you know, even though we are for Chapman. Cool trick shot, it's a cool trick shot. Exactly. Got to give credit where credit's due. Right, when I was covering the men's game against Clemson. Sorry, that was a very close attempt there for the Panthers. Almost scored there, Josie Morrissey. But... uh Clemson had a crazy play, diving pass play that they ended up scoring. Highlight reel, should have been on SportsCenter. I remember that play. I feel like we have a lot of plays here at Chapman from by covering baseball this season as well that should have been on SportsCenter. We got our left fielder to rob a home run, basically, not get on SportsCenter. You know, if you are watching and you want anything on SportsCenter, please, you know, take a screen recording, DM it to SportsCenter. Who knows? They might see it. SportsCenter at SportsCenter, one word, no caps on Instagram. And you can always find a lot of our big highlights and plays on our social media at CSBN. Make sure you follow, like, and subscribe. Yes, yes, please do all those things. We've really tried to grow our social media this year. Chapman Sports Broadcasting Network has been around for many years, but definitely has taken some big leaps, and it could not be done without our wonderful president Callista Kirk and all of our executive board that have stepped up and completely put this club on the map yes and our social media is actually at CSBN live one word CSBN live on Instagram Twitter and YouTube and TikTok as well speaking of TikTok the clock is ticking down and we have a drop ball shot attempt from the Panthers but it goes wide and it's going to be a Panther possession. Now again here for Chapman. Score. That's the key. Score. One goal lead. Not safe here at all. That was a great play to get that pass by Elise Mayer there. We've seen 
two one goal leads quickly disappear as Whittier took the lead and now Chapman came back and took the lead so getting a little bit of a gap will make all of your players breathe easier and you're not squeezing the stick as much but the Panthers are going to take having offensive possession and running down the clock just as well up top a little bit of a miss pass there Oh, a big slash down. They both were playing it. Let's see what's called here. A little shaking up on the play there. That was a big aggressive play. Both players going in there. Ferreira, she's tough. She's shooken, but she's going to get right back on there. Got the goggles back in. Ready to go. Both We're going to give this to the poets. Yeah, both players there are okay, which is the main thing that you want to see whenever something like that happens. Ferreira almost oh. gets that steal. You see that lower hand stick check as she bopped right below the bottom hand. That is a legal stick check. That's beautiful defense. Yeah, great effort there by Ferreira. Sepulveda now with it. We got a whistle. And we're going to take a timeout. Whittier. Interesting call, I feel like. I mean, I didn't think a timeout was necessarily needed. There, you know, it's a one-goal game. You have over seven minutes to go as the clock is still running, I believe, here as we wait for all of the players to get back to their respective benches. And what do you think Coach Dan's going to talk about here to his team? This is definitely one of those times where you, you want to bring down – the emotions bring down the energy you want them to be focused there's good energy there's good momentum but you don't want to get too in your head too excited so he's just reminding them to take a breath drink some water and take the lead don't give up those bad penalties play disciplined and keep advancing forward yeah i mean i i agree couldn't have said it any better there as we have, you know, the time out here, stopping the play. Hopefully players staying hydrated here. If you're Whittier's coach, though, I think the message here is that you've been playing pretty well in the second half. Like, there's not really much that you've done wrong necessarily here. You know, I think it might just be more the same, but just try to get into the attacking zone a little more, a little earlier maybe, as time is no longer on your side. It can't be running down that clock. That is very true, Josh. As we see the Chapman team here going through the timeout not too much uh emotion coming from coaches there are, seems on both sides they are very confident in their team they know that these ladies have it in them as you see hughes guild there she has been a huge huge factor for these poets as they were able to climb back and take the lead but unfortunately panthers did get back on the board yeah you know again if we're the Panthers here scoring the main key you want to get that two goal lead I feel like with five minutes to go you want to have multiple goal leads so if you do concede you're not like oh no tie game you're saying hey we still got one lead up one goal up Let's try to get this up here as we have the officials of sprinting back out onto the field there as I believe it will be. Should be the Poets ball. Yes, I believe it is going to be Whittier's possession. I was just making sure. Davidson with it. And possession is back. The refs say the whistle or the time clock can go. And Whittier working that perimeter. On the outside again, coach was probably going over. Davidson working around the outside, now low. Back up high, Sepulveda. She's going to truck through, as we know she can do. Definitely makes your defense think a little bit when she's got it. As again, Whittier taking... A long time here is over 40 seconds now have passed since that timeout. 
you know, you want to kind of see some more urgency, maybe. I mean, Chatwin is playing some great defense right now, but again, urgency from Whittier is the key. Oh, a little pass play down low. That was that could have been very dangerous. And you see the defense for the Panthers pick up the ball and they run it into the crease as we saw before. That allows the Panthers to have a clean breakout rather than giving up a chance or a turnover a chance. Yes, very, very true. I think that was a great play there. Good heads up play saying, hey, you know, we're backed up, but they can't take it <laughs> right then and there. Ricketts with it. Look at how much space they have. There's just nothing. Not a lot of coverage from the Poets here. Late with a one goal deficit. Yeah, that's that's very true. You know, the space is definitely interesting as Chapman's going to let it go there, but they will still maintain possession. I'm not seeing any energy coming from the Poets' defense here. They had an opportunity to run out that ball and get possession back, but they're just letting the Panthers take full possession right now. As Bittis right now arguing that she got hit in the face there as Chapman is now going to call a timeout, which I think this timeout's unneeded, completely unneeded, because you give Whittier a chance to regroup as well. That's the thing about calling a timeout. It's late in these games. Is that, you know, Whittier has a chance to regroup, has a chance to strategize. Again, Chapman being up one, they were in a good position. You know, they were attacking the net with some force, getting some nice pace, some nice movement. Had a lot of space, as you were pointing out earlier on in that possession. So, again, definitely an interesting call here. Is this maybe to say, hey, let's try to strategize, you know, this goal that will put us up two? Yeah, I think, uh, as you saw, Sophia Batiste, she was trying to get that call there. You could see some emotion as she was talking to coach and coach telling her to settle down. I know what you thought. I know I've been in those heated situations where you feel like you're getting fouled. You don't want to get a misconduct from the ref. So coach telling her to take it easy and explaining the situation to her. But I think what right now they really just want to focus on not giving any turnovers. Turnovers are, have been destroying their offensive opportunities this entire game and I think they need to tighten that down and focus on making smart clean passes work the cycle just like the poets are doing the poets should be the ones attacking and going in deep it's the Panthers that need to be working the perimeter now and I haven't seen really that happen yet I haven't seen a lot of clock management from the Panthers and I hope to see that here after this timeout yeah that's definitely a key as well but again if you are, but if she actually did get hit in the face, you also want to make sure she is okay. True. Yeah, you know, for true. sure. I mean, if you were calling that time out to make sure that she is okay, that is all fine and well. Now it looks like we got the timeout ending. Everyone's in for the Panthers. Little sticks up. Go Panthers, go. And they are taking the field. Yep. Let's just see how they respond here, how they will end off this regular season here. As we have Haley getting back in goal here. I have to say I'm very impressed by both goalies for the both teams. They've been playing really well. This is could have been a lot higher scoring game, but they've been standing very strong in net for both sides. This Panther is ready to get this ball into play after the timeout. That's Guerrero with it. Now she gives it down to Batiste. Guerrero shakes, shimmies. Oh, she could have shot it, but she was just foundering with the ball. Didn't feel comfortable sh releasing it. Another shot there, but that goes wide. And let's see who ran it out. Poets, I think they're going to say that it was not a shot on goal, so that will be an automatic Poet ball. All right, Kyle, as we have lost our score bug here momentarily on screen, but I will fill you guys in. 9-8, Chapman. We're approaching four and a half minutes left to go here in this match. And again, for Whittier, time... Again, it's only one goal that you would need to force, I believe, an overtime. I believe we have an overtime. And 
Let's see if they can do that because if not, Chapman's going to start running down this clock here. Overtime definitely an option. As Whittier fans making some noise there, very, very happy about that one. That's the first time I've really heard them, you know, kind of get up, get a little rowdy there in a good way. Good rowdy the whole game. I feel like the uh, pressure is mounting as we are uh, approaching under four minutes left. And Whittier feeling their season disappearing in those four minutes. Although, the ball opportunity for Lauren J. Sepulveda. This is what we were talking about not doing if you are the Panthers. And a big save by Herrera. Or Hero, sorry. Panthers possession as you hear the fans excited about that one. Yeah, they're starting to be able to taste it, but you can never ever celebrate too early in any sport here, Kyle. So, still got to finish the job here with around three and a half minutes left. All right, this is a big possession for the Panthers right now. As we have Parker House just basically going almost the whole length of the right sideline there. Running down the right side. Big pass into the middle, shot, huge save, Hughes Gill. Oh my goodness. Now that went right back to Annika Carlson though. So good, good ball awareness. They're able to get that right back into the basket of the stick. It would have let Chapman reset. Huge rebound pickup by the Panthers. Guerrera passing it over to Ricketts. Ricketts shakes, gets in, bounce. Oh, Hughes Gill there. It's still loose. Can she turn around and shoot it? That's Bittis with the ball, but she's instead going to pass back out to Ferreira. Or up to Guerrera. Streaking down. Big shot! And that's Carlson with the goal! And I believe Carlson now has a hat trick on the day here as well. 10-8 now, Chapman with 2.40 to go. And that was the goal that they needed to give them a cushion here in these final Two minutes, and now with Whittier, got to score. This basically this possession here. Now with the two-goal lead, Annika Carlson, I believe, now does have three goals on the day. She's got one. At least a multi-point performance so far. And two, yes. She does have three goals as we see that replay. Able to get through there as we have our live stats being updated here. Shout out to Steven Olveda and our work study crew down there helping us out. As with 2.42 to go, Whittier, time is of the essence. Whittier definitely feeling the pressure. 2.42 left, 10 to eight, Chapman with the lead. As we wait for this face off, also wanna thank all of our crew here at CSBN, our wonderful producer, Kinsley Rolf, our director, Emily Cho. We've got so many wonderful, talented people here at Chapman Sports Broadcast Network. It would take literally the rest of this period to thank every single person. But we are so grateful that we can have such a wonderful crew to be able to bring you this type of experiment. Yes. Experience. Experiment. We're all an experiment, aren't we? Well, I mean, maybe. As Chapman <laughs> here has the ball as we will have something special for some crew members during our post-game show, so stay tuned for that. And we also may have a little competition with our sideline reporter, Justin, if you guys want to stay tuned as well. Yeah, we're feeling that competitive spirit here as we got a two-goal game. Behind our players is actually the uh, Keck Science Building, so that's where all of our experimenting happens here at Chapman. Yes, very, very nice building if anyone watching as a Chapman Center has never been in there. Probably one of the best buildings at all of Chapman. Obviously, we're Dodge kids, Dodge close to home, but Keck Center, very nice and modern. A lot of very, very groundbreaking research occurs there. And Panthers here trying to get things going on the Keck side of the field. So we got a little communication from the refs. As Guerra is just holding off for right now, approaching under two minutes now. Now officially under two minutes here. And if a goal here for Chapman, I do think puts this away. Ricketts just given all the time and space by Whittier. And Chella Davidson there trying to hold her off on the defensive end here. She got the inside shoulder there, but double teamed. 
Now she finally passes it off. Carlson gives it up to Guerrera. And that is Peyton Klimmer there, one of our key players, trying to hold her Shook off. her off. And another bouncer, but she didn't get it in. Hughes Gill standing up strong, battle for it. And they're going to give it to the Poets after that scrum. If you're the Poets here, a goal within 20 seconds. I think 20 seconds here is the max because getting two goals in under 50 seconds, pretty unlikely. And they're going to give it up to their defender to try to streak it up. Pass here. Oh, she drops it and it goes out of bounds. That's going to be Panther ball. Oh. Huge, huge error for the Poets on that one. Yeah, that was the senior Liz Witt, the defender there, who dropped that one as I believe Chapman now is probably getting ready here to just run down the clock. Although, however, in here, he needs to get back and go. Yeah. <laughs> just this in case. This could be very dangerous, too. That as ball we have not. Lauren Jade Sepulveda chasing down our Chapman player, Sophie Pelton, there. Although they clear it back into the crease, as you said. A big play here with 10 seconds left now. Two goal lead. This one is over. Yeah, the Panthers trying to do some clock management. Sepulveda, though, doing everything she can to irritate the goaltender and the defense and we got Ricketts last seconds of play can she get it off buzzer goes stopping this one 10 to 8 Panthers over the Whittier Poets what an exciting match we knew it was going to be close looks like Chapman able to uh, keep the score 8 to 10 and not giving up the ninth like they did at Whittier. Yeah, yeah, again, a very close game as we have some players dancing as they know they honor their seniors well here with a 10-8 victory. Chapman now will finish the season 11-5. and five. Again, a good record there. And if you're in the NFL with this back when there were 16 games, that's enough to make the playoffs there. And that will be enough to make the playoffs here as well as we got all of our players dancing for joy as a 10-8 victory. Again, another hard-fought hard fought game with these Whittier Poets here. And Whittier still had a good season overall, finishing 8-8, eight and eight, just missing out on those playoffs, but giving all, giving Chapman, rather, all that they can handle, Kyle. That's right. We're going to let the uh, environment kind of wash over you. You can hear the music down there. Whittier Poets, they put up a good fight. They tried, they came out. Not sure if anyone bled, but they definitely put their sweat and tears into this one. Yes, they did. And now we have, everyone is shaking hands there, but now we have some key highlights from this game that we would like to take you all through as everything's getting loaded in here. Chapman going to playoffs with high heads, Great emotions, good vibes all around as that game happening next week. But here are some highlights here. Quick snipe for Whittier. Got them into the tie. And then Panthers here it's not giving up. Big, huge ground ball by Ricketts as she approached the middle there. Another dead ball. Kind of the bane of the existence for both teams today. But a huge save there by Hero as she was able to come up with a victory today. Yes, but then that was Samantha Nimmo who had a hat-trick of her own in this loss, getting a wide open lane again. And then here we have Lauren Jade Sepulveda who had that great goal that went in pretty quickly. We didn't, weren't able to tell there at first, but again with Whittier here, we have Molly Landon who had that sweeping ground ball that went in. But here we have Annika, Annika Carlson who right here sealed this game with the 10th goal of the game for Chapman, who had a hat trick of her own. And then Ricketts again with another dead ball goal. As Chapman, both teams though, really got a lot of dead ball opportunities and made the most of them, wouldn't you say? Yes, definitely. A lot of ground balls, a lot of dead ball opportunities. That was what led to most of the goals today. You can see all the Chapman ladies down there enjoying the victory. A lot of seniors enjoying the taste of a final game, but with a victory. And we're going to actually 
invite our MVP, Jessica Ricketts, number 34. She's going to be with our sideline reporter, Justin, down there. So we're definitely excited to hear from her and what this Chapman squad was able to bring to the table today. Yeah, and Jessica Rink has had a hat trick, like we said, very, very key, was using her height to her advantage. Had some good low stick checks, which are legal here, and were able to get steal opportunities as a result of that, as we now have, even though after a win, our players definitely still helping out here with setup and cleanup. And now Justin Lee on the sidelines with our MVP. Jessica Ricketts. Justin, take it away. Hello, I'm here with Jessica Ricketts, our CSBN MVP, the senior here today with a hat trick and also broke the record for most draw controls in a career here at Chapman University. Big win today for you guys. This is your senior day. How does it feel out here? Um, it was definitely a lot of fun. Really sad being the senior game, but we're very happy. We had a good support team here, so we're very proud with how we ended the game. Absolutely. You guys um, have been really close with Whittier a lot of the year, like 10-9 was the last matchup today, very similar as well. You guys knock them out of the playoffs, which is huge for you guys, obviously, but you guys get to play against Car Claremont MS on Wednesday. What's the mentality going into that? Um, definitely the same as like every game, like we want to win, so we're going to put all our all into the game. We're going to train really hard on the next two days for practice and really try and win that game. We're very excited for it. You have a lot of veteran experience as a senior, obviously. Do you have a message for a lot of these younger people who are going to be taking the mantle after you're gone? Ooh, um, I would say just stick with it. Really get to know the team. I think really relying on your teammates and getting to know them both on and off the field is so important. So I think that's mostly it. Absolutely. Well, is there any celebrations in partake later today? I'm not sure. I definitely can spend time with family since I have a lot of family in town, but I'll definitely spend time with all the seniors later too. Absolutely. Congrats on the win and good luck in the playoffs and we'll see you guys there. Thank you. This has been Justin with uh, Jessica Ricketts. Thank you, Justin. Such a great interview to have. And as you know, we got to show off our MVP. So oh, we're yeah. going to look at some highlights of Jessica Ricketts' performance today in this one. Uh, definitely saw some attacking through the middle there, getting the, pu the puck, getting the ball in the net. Scoring in the cage, bringing that senior mentality to bring her team into this one. Driving through the middle, not afraid to take those whacks and those hacks, and she grounds it in for the second one of the day. Yes, and then for her final goal here on another dead ball opportunity going right down again with another open lane. Both teams really struggled with those open lanes, but Chapman again coming out on top 10-8, and Jessica Ricketts a very, very important part of that. And I believe now, Kyle, we have a pretty fun segment coming out here in our post game. Would you like to explain what we're going to do here? Well, I mean, we celebrate here at CSBN when our Chapman sports teams come away with the W. And uh, I heard someone down the sideline, possibly Justin Lee, was wanting to have a gritty off. Yes. If we will. Maybe a little competition. I don't know. Can we... Uh, Bring him up. Okay. I'm, it looks like I'm going to be going first here, Josh. All right, Kyle. I, I, you better set the bar. Can you gritty? Can you I gritty? Mean, I'm going to do it. But can I'm you do this? You. Can you? Can you? Oh, that's okay. right. That's right. Okay, oh. Kyle. Okay. Well, what I'm going to go What do you now? got down there, this Justin? Is, what do you is, got? What do you got? All right, Justin. All right. I said you guys were on. Here we go. Let's see what he's got. Oh, shoot. What is that? What is he even doing? Come on now. Come Looks on like he now. was just skipping. All right. This All right, is the Josh, grand finale. Do not roast me at home. This is going to be very bad as Justin is the well, only person to have ever um, seen me gritty. And we're doing it now, everybody. As go. That is my gritty. Oh, do some more. Do some more. I think Let Justin me see by far has the best gritty. Uh, I don't by know about far, that. By far here at CSBN. What do you got, Justin? Do you think you took that one or was I the best as we know? Hey guys, if you want to vote, who's better, Kyle, Josh, or Justin, go on the social media right now at CSBN Live. But for now, this has been Justin Lee. It's been a pleasure to be your sideline reporter today, and uh, we'll see you guys at the next broadcast.
Thank you, Justin. Man, I got worked up. I'm all sweaty. Yeah. We got some exciting lacrosse that happened we today. We did. Burning hot here as something that we have special planned is that it's not only Chapman Lacrosse's senior day, it's senior day here at CSBN as we have some senior crew members who will be graduating this year as we have some photos of them up on the screen. And first up, we have a Colin Gadget who sadly was unable to make it here today, but we all love Colin. Tech guru there, we have, and vice president, we have our president, Callista Kirk, who was a broadcast and talk major just like Colin. And lastly, we have our producer today, Kinsley Rolf, who also executive produces our student-run weekly newscast, Chapman News, a broadcast and doc major as well. And we are very thankful for all of their contributions, not just this year, but over their entire Chapman career. And we will miss them very much. As I was saying, this broadcast, the way that we have been able to bring all of our sports to you at home would not be an option without those three at the helm they've done so much for us as all of our seniors all of our juniors here at chapman have been leading the way leading the torch and josh it's been an honor and a privilege to work with you tonight thank you today Kyle. uh this is you know ernie chapman stadium beautiful spot wilson field beautiful stop i'm kyle carr this is joshua finehurst for all of us here at csbn thank you for joining have a great rest of your day Thank you. Thank you.